He lives in Canada. He's Chinese, but he lives in Canada. His son plays uh, in a local orchestra there, uh, but he he uh, makes reeds and also gets reeds from around the world. And uh, he has a reed called a Donzi reed, D-A-N-Z-I. Uh, that's a professional reed. Uh, that's what these uh, red ones are that I play on. And uh, they're they're expensive. They're twenty-five dollars each, but they they'll last. They'll last a year, you know, if, if you don't take care of them. I mean, if you do take care of them. He also has student reads that are only $8 a piece. Uh, they're like this, and my students play on them. Uh, they're uh, uh, all already shaped. Uh, I have not gotten one single bad read. I usually order a dozen of those student reads at a time. And uh, if you order uh, a dozen, then he gets, you get a discount and stuff. And he'll, sometimes he'll give you a free read case that, that they come in. Uh, so that's, he's, uh, to me, it's a very good deal that he offers. This is, like I say, www.bassoon123.us. And uh, he has student reads that are $8 each. Uh, then he has uh, a little bit better student read, uh, the move up a little bit. And then he has what he calls his professional read. They're $16. And then he has what he calls a U.S. cut, which is $18. And I've played on both of those, and, and I like them okay, but I've had the most luck. I like the Donzi Reed. I, I play with a bright bassoon sound, and I, I get in trouble for playing too loud. Uh, but uh, uh, if you like a darker bassoon ra uh, sound than his professional Reed, the one that cost uh, 16 and the ones that cost 18 they're a little darker sound. But I... I, I like playing with a, 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 a brighter sound, and so I, I play on the, the, the Donzi Reed. Uh, uh, you can help your bassoon players make their reeds last longer. Uh, if, if when they finish playing, if they'll like dip them in water again and use their fingernail and just scrape off the epithelial cells, the cheek cells from your mouth that get on your reed, just scrape those off and then blow the water out the, you know, blow from this end and just blow it out, and then let them air dry. You know, uh, don't don't seal them up hermetically in a container where humidity, because there's so much humidity around here already, uh, because that'll just promote the growth of of all kind of fungus and and stuff all over. And uh, also, uh, once a week, I uh, I dip my reeds down in a solution of water and alcohol to kill any bacteria that is on there. And I change my water, my water that I dip them in, I change it every day. But uh, uh, <clears throat> I don't like to see kids keep their reeds in water all the time. Uh, it, 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 to me, it gives them a tubby sound and uh, it makes the reed deteriorate. And uh, I, I play, uh, this is a heckle vocal. Uh, this is a, a Fox Bassoon 201, but the vocal is a heckle vocal, number two. I like to see kids play on number two. Uh, if they have a Fox Bassoon, play on a, a Fox uh, number two CBX. That way the CBX uh, uh, will mean that it'll hit the high notes and the low notes and get a, a full sound. Uh, you can have them play on a double C uh, vocal, but that's just mainly for low notes. But a CBX means that it'll, on the upper, uh, the, the upper register will not sound thin. You know, it'll give them a, a fuller sound on the, on the upper register. Um, I, I know I probably play too loud for, for most orchestras and bands. I have to I hold back and stuff. But uh, I always get my kids to play out. Uh, most of them. Uh, when they come from junior high, they're used to just playing little marches, and, and then all of a sudden we get them into high school, and they're asked to play these solos. You know, the, here they are expected to project. You know, going from playing little bitty marches like trombone parts or tuba parts, and then all of a sudden now they're going to play with the flutes and the clarinets, and it's supposed to tune with them. And um, I, I have uh, found that if I get my kids to if they'll open their throat like this and when they're playing, just think of, of ah, get them the ah sound. It'll, it'll help the, their tonality. It'll get them a darker, bigger sound than to just take a breath and blow. I mean, it, it's different than, I mean, also, you know, we're using the diaphragm down here to push with. 
And that's good, you know, pushing, breathing from the diaphragm and pushing. But they need to, oh, like that, get them to open their throat. And even little kids, it makes a dramatic difference in their sound. I'm teaching a little kid right now. He's in the seventh grade, and he's the height of this bassoon. And uh, he's very small. His hands just, he has to play on a beginner bassoon. A beginner bassoon, uh, the third uh, key right here, has a little extension. It's, it, it looks like a key like this. It has actually a key. And so his little fingers, his little hands, he can reach this right there. And also, uh, it, a beginner bassoon doesn't have this extra uh, B-flat trill key here. It's gone. So these keys are closer, so he can reach his low F in A-flat. So if you have a small child, uh, they can play on a Fox beginner plastic bassoon. I made all-state band on a beginner plastic bassoon when I was in high school. And so, I mean, it can be done. Uh, but a wooden bassoon gets a lot better sound, richer sound, and uh, can play louder. But uh, for, for kids that are really small, uh, the, where they, they can't, a beginner bassoon, the space between the second and third fingers is closer together. So they can, they, it, with, even with small hands, they can, they can play like that. Uh, do y'all have some questions you'd like to ask?